You know how they say life can flip on a dime? That's exactly what happened to me at this party. My friend Jess had been nagging me for weeks to come out and meet her bunch of incredible friends. Honestly, I was more into a quiet night with my reports and market analysis, but Jess wouldn't have any of it. Sarah, you need to get out more. Come on, it'll be fun, she insisted. So, there I was, in my least uncomfortable party dress, nursing a glass of wine and sticking out like a sore thumb among strangers. The place was buzzing, people laughing and chatting away. I stuck close to Jess, who seemed to know everyone. She was in the middle of introducing me to a couple of her friends when he walked in. Tom. Jess's face lit up. Oh, you gotta meet Tom, she said, dragging me through the crowd. Tom was this average-looking guy, nothing like the flashy type she'd expect at these gatherings. He had a sad smile that didn't quite reach his eyes. Jess introduced us, and for some reason, we clicked. Maybe it was the way he talked about his daughter, Lily, with such warmth and pride. Or maybe it was his candidness about being a widower and raising her alone. Whatever it was, it got me. We found ourselves away from the crowd, sitting on some ridiculously oversized cushions. So, Sarah, Jess tells me you're into stocks and all that Wall Street stuff. Tom started, his voice rough but friendly. Yeah, something like that. I analyze investment opportunities, help people grow their money. Sounds boring, I know, I replied, trying to make my job sound less nerdy than it was. Nah, that sounds pretty damn impressive. Wish I knew a thing or two about handling money like that, he chuckled, taking a sip of his beer. We talked about everything and nothing, movies, books, the nightmare of dating. I found myself laughing more than I had in months. Tom had this easy way about him, making you feel like you'd known him forever. You know, I didn't want to come tonight. Socializing isn't exactly my strong suit, I confessed, feeling unusually open. Tell me about it. I only came because Jess promised Lily could tag along for a bit. Wanted her to meet some normal adults, whatever that means, Tom said, rolling his eyes. The conversation shifted to Lily, and I could see the light in Tom's eyes when he talked about her. She's something else, my Lily. Smart, kind, a bit too cheeky for her own good, he said, a proud smile spreading across his face. I was intrigued. She sounds wonderful. Raising a kid on your own, that's got to be tough. Tom shrugged, his expression turning serious. It's not easy, but Lily makes it all worth it. She's the best thing that ever happened to me. As the party wound down, I realized I didn't want this conversation to end. Tom felt like a breath of fresh air in my calculated, routine life. Hey, maybe we could grab a coffee sometime? Talk more about market trends, or whatever? I found myself saying, surprising even myself. Tom's smile was the answer I hoped for. I'd like that. It's been a long time since I had a reason to look forward to something. Very soon I met Tom's daughter, and she was like a breath of fresh air. We quickly became friends, which made her father very happy. That's how a simple meeting turned into a real love affair. After Tom and I decided to tie the knot, it was clear we wanted something simple, no fancy dresses or grand churches. Just us, my folks, and Lily, who was more excited than anyone. The day was plain but perfect, filled with genuine smiles and a few happy tears. Moving into Tom's house afterwards, I was buzzing with ideas to make the place feel more like ours, not just his. My new life meant working from home, which my boss was surprisingly cool about. It gave me the chance to really bond with Lily. I'd pick her up from school, and we'd chat about everything under the sun on our way to her ballet classes. She started calling me mom, which warmed my heart every single time. Creating a cozy home for us became my new project, filling it with love and laughter. But, as the months rolled by, things with Tom started shifting, so subtly at first. He'd make offhand comments about dinner being too bland or too salty. Sarah, what's this supposed to be? Tom would ask, poking at a casserole I'd spend hours on. Supposed to be your dinner but if you're gonna act all Gordon Ramsay about it, maybe you should cook tomorrow, 
I'd retort, trying to keep the mood light. He didn't. Instead, the critiques piled up. My appearance became his next target. Babe, when did you last hit the gym? You're looking, different. Tom dropped casually one evening, his eyes skimming over me, like I was a fixer-upper. Guess I've been too busy being a stepmom and working from home. But thanks for the heads up, I snapped back, the sting of his words hitting harder than expected. Lily, bless her, was my silver lining. She and I grew closer, our bond unaffected by the growing tension between her dad and me. Mom, can you help me with my homework? Lily would ask, her bright eyes always looking up to me for guidance. Of course, sweetie. Let's tackle it together, I'd reply, grateful for her presence and the normalcy it brought. Even as Tom and I drifted apart, Lily and I stuck together like glue. I found solace in our little talks and her ballet recitals. Yet, despite my efforts to keep our home a haven, Tom's dissatisfaction seemed to seep into every corner. You know, Sarah, maybe you should try one of those online cooking classes. Spice things up a bit. Tom suggested one night, his tone laced with an undercurrent of displeasure. Or maybe we could try eating out more. Give your taste buds a break from my terrible cooking. I'd counter, half-joking, but deeply wounded. Life at home started feeling less like a family and more like walking on eggshells. Tom's attitude took a nosedive, and it wasn't just about small things anymore. He set these crazy rules like expecting a brand new dish for dinner every single day. It was as if he thought I was some kind of gourmet chef instead of his partner. One evening, I was in the kitchen, trying to whip up something new to keep him happy. I was juggling work emails on my phone, stirring a pot, and mentally planning my next day. Tom walked in, a scowl already forming on his face. What's for dinner? He asked, his tone sharp. I'm trying something new, a recipe I found online. Thought we could use a little variety, I said, trying to sound upbeat. He just humphed, peering over my shoulder. Doesn't look very appetizing. You know, when you decided to work from home, I thought you'd at least manage to keep the house in order and cook decent meals. His words stung. Tom, you know I'm working too, right? It's not like I'm sitting around all day. Plus, I pick up Lily, help her with homework, visit my parents. He cut me off. Yeah, yeah, always the same excuse. You're at home, aren't you? Shouldn't be too hard to keep things tidy and cook properly. I bit my tongue, holding back the tears. It was becoming a nightly ritual, this dance of disappointment and criticism. One night, as we settled on the couch to watch TV, he started on about my appearance. Pointing at the women on the screen, he said, Look at them, they're about your age, right? Why do they look so much younger and better? I tried to keep my voice level. Tom, those women have all day to focus on looking good. They likely have personal trainers, chefs, and who knows what cosmetic work done. But he wouldn't have it. Excuses, Sarah. It's all about priorities. You used to care about how you looked. I felt deflated, worn out. It wasn't just about the cooking or the cleaning anymore, it was a constant comparison, a reminder that I wasn't enough. During these times, Lily was my only solace. Now a teenager, she saw through her dad's behavior. Mom, you don't deserve this. Why do you put up with it? You should just leave him, she'd say, her words filled with worry and anger but I couldn't bring myself to believe that the Tom I fell in love with was completely gone. He's under a lot of stress, Lily. I believe he still loves us. He'll change, I'd respond, more to convince myself than her. It's been a roller coaster, to say the least. Fifteen years of ups and downs, but mostly, it feels like I've been riding a slow descent into a place I never thought I'd find myself. Now, at fifty-five, with my stepdaughter Lily living her own life, though we talk every day, sharing secrets and stories like we used to, life threw me another curveball. Cancer. The word hit me like a freight train, but somehow, I managed to keep my composure long enough to tell Tom. His reaction? Well, it was something. Not anger, not sadness, just, disappointment. 
not because of the diagnosis, but because I wouldn't be around to cook his meals or clean the house like I used to. What am I supposed to do now? Look after myself, he had said, his voice laced with irritation rather than concern. I was stunned, not sure how to respond to such blatant selfishness. It's not like I expected a dramatic outpouring of love and support, but a little empathy wouldn't have hurt. His lack of concern cut deeper than any diagnosis could. So, I started treatment, spending more time in the hospital than at home. My parents, bless their hearts, visited whenever they could, despite their own health issues. Lily, too, was a constant presence, her calls and visits a bright spot in those dreary hospital days. Tom? He never showed. Not once. It hurt, more than I wanted to admit. Even after everything, part of me hoped he'd come around, show that he cared, even just a little. During one of Lily's visits, I couldn't hide my disappointment any longer. I can't believe he hasn't shown up. Not even once, I confided, trying to keep the bitterness out of my voice. Lily, ever the straight shooter, didn't mince her words. Mom, you deserve so much better. I've been saying it for years. It's like he doesn't even see you. You're fighting this battle, and where is he? Nowhere. You need to think about what's best for you now. I knew she was right, but it's not easy to let go of 15 years, even if they weren't all good. Deep down, I still harbored that small flicker of hope that things could get better, that Tom would change. But lying in that hospital bed, facing my own mortality, I started to see things more clearly. Maybe it was time to start thinking about what I needed, not just what Tom wanted. The revelation came on a Tuesday, just another ordinary day until Lily walked into my hospital room with a look that spelled trouble. I could tell something was up the moment I saw her, Lily never was good at hiding her feelings. Mom, we need to talk. She started, avoiding my gaze. That's when my stomach tied itself into knots. Lily calling me mom was always a bomb to my soul, but today, it felt like the prelude to bad news. What's wrong, Lily? I asked, bracing myself. It's about dad. She hesitated, then took a deep breath, he's seeing someone else, mom. And it's serious. He introduced her to me last week. The words hit me like a punch to the gut. Not that our marriage was perfect, but to hear he'd moved on so blatantly was a different kind of hurt. How long? Was all I managed to muster, my voice barely above a whisper. A while, I guess. I'm so sorry, Mom. I thought you should know. Lily's voice cracked, her usual toughness giving way to concern. I sat there, trying to process the news. Betrayed, yes, but surprised? Not entirely. Tom hadn't been a husband to me in a long time. Still, the confirmation of his infidelity stung. The shock of it hit me hard, though a part of me wasn't surprised. Tom's late nights, the sudden interest in looking younger, the new cologne, it all made sense now. Yet, hearing it out loud from Lily felt like a betrayal of a whole different kind. Does he think this is okay? Introducing her to you like it's all normal? I couldn't keep the anger out of my voice. Lily shrugged. He's convinced himself, you're already gone, mom. Says it's time he moved on for his happiness. It's... It's like he doesn't even care about how this would hurt you. I laughed, a harsh sound that surprised even me. His happiness, huh? What about all those years I spent trying to make him happy? What a joke. And that's when it hit me, Tom had never really seen me. Not the real me. He saw a caretaker, a cook, a cleaner, but never his wife. And here I was, battling cancer, while he played house with someone else. For the first time in a long time, I felt a spark of something fierce within me. Anger, yes, but also determination. I'd been living for Tom, worrying about his meals, his house, his happiness. It was time to start living for myself. Lily wiped away a tear, looking determined all of a sudden. What are you gonna do? You can't let him just get away with this. A cold resolve settled over me. Tom's actions, his complete disregard for our marriage, it all clarified one thing, it was time to close this chapter for good. Tell him I agree to the divorce, 
I said firmly, surprising even myself with the decisiveness in my voice. It's clear he's moved on, and so should I. Lily's eyes widened. Really? Just like that? Yes, just like that. He thinks he can replace me so easily, let him try. But he'll regret this, Lily. Not today, maybe not tomorrow, but one day. He'll see what he's thrown away. Lily stood up, her stance shifting from worried to warrior-like. I'll tell him. And mom, we'll get through this. Screw him and his midlife crisis fantasy. You're worth a million of her. Her fiery spirit in that moment gave me strength. I was about to embark on a tough journey, battling both cancer and a crumbling marriage, but I wasn't alone. I had Lily, and together, we were formidable. Thanks, Lily. We've got this, I said, a small smile breaking through the gloom. It was the beginning of a new chapter, one where I would reclaim my life and my dignity, with my loyal stepdaughter by my side. Two days had felt like an eternity, each moment dragging on as I lay in that hospital bed, my body fighting a battle I hadn't signed up for. Then Tom walked in, his presence as cold as the chill running down my spine. The smirk on his face was something out of a nightmare, but this was my reality. He looked me over, his eyes devoid of any warmth. Look at you, all sick and pitiful. Can't say I'm surprised. You've let yourself go, haven't you? Found myself someone much better. Younger, prettier, healthier. He gloated, his words dripping with disdain. His words cut deeper than any knife could, but I was done showing him my pain. He threw the divorce papers on my bed, a challenge in his eyes. I took a deep breath, steadying my resolve. I picked up the pen and signed, each stroke a silent vow to myself that this was the beginning of my liberation, not my defeat. You're just as weak-willed as ever. Pathetic. He sneered, a twisted satisfaction in his gaze. I met his stare, my voice steady. If that's what helps you sleep at night, Tom. The confusion flickered across his face, replaced quickly by his usual arrogance. He strutted out, leaving a trail of bitterness in his wake. As soon as the door clicked shut, I reached for my phone with a determination that surprised even me. I called Lily, my voice stronger than I felt. Lily, it's done. But I need you to do something for me. I said, pausing to make sure I had her full attention. Tell your dad about the three million dollar I plan to leave you. It's important he knows. There was a brief silence on the other end, and I could almost see the gears turning in her head. Mom, are you sure? He's going to flip out. A small smile tugged at my lips. That's the point, darling. True to form, Tom's reaction was immediate and as predictable as ever. My phone became an incessant, vibrating companion, lighting up with his attempts to reach me. With each missed call, I felt an inch taller, a bit stronger. I watched the number climb, 50, 60, 70 missed calls, and with it, my resolve solidified. I couldn't help but laugh, a sound that felt foreign yet fitting for the moment. Here I was, supposedly at my weakest, yet I'd never felt more empowered. I had taken the first real step towards freeing myself from the chains of Tom's manipulation and cruelty. The sun was just peeking through the blinds when Tom burst into my hospital room the next morning desperation etched in every line of his face. His sudden change of heart was as transparent as it was pathetic. Sarah, I've been a fool. I see that now. I love you, and I'm ready to leave her and start over with you. We can remarry, start fresh, he pleaded, his hands outstretched as if he could physically pull me back into the life we once shared. I couldn't help but laugh, a deep, genuine sound that seemed to startle him. Tom, you've shown me exactly who you are. After years of neglect, cruelty, and now this betrayal? And you think what? A few sweet words, and it's all forgiven? He blanched, taken aback, by my reaction. Sarah, please. I mean it. I realized I made a mistake. I shook my head, still incredulous. A mistake? Tom, you deliberately chose to step out on our marriage, humiliated me, while I was at my lowest. No, it's too late for regrets. His desperation turned to anger, his face reddening. 
you'll regret this. I'll make sure of it. I'll sue you for every penny of that hidden money of yours. The threat was laughable. Go ahead and try, Tom. That money? It's in my father's name. He made those investments, all legally binding and documented. You won't get a dime. The realization of his powerlessness hit him hard. His anger dissipated into sobs of frustration, a pitiful sight that had the guards rushing in. As they escorted him out, I moved to the window, watching him. There he was, the man I'd spent so many years with, looking so defeated and alone. Yet, I felt no pity. He was reaping what he'd sown, and in that moment, I knew I was finally free. Justice prevails, I whispered to myself, a smile touching my lips. In that hospital room, I made a promise to myself. No longer would I be defined by the failings of my marriage or the cruelty of a man who couldn't appreciate the love and loyalty I'd offered. It was time to rebuild, to focus on my health, my happiness, and the future I deserved. The battle with cancer was like riding the world's most terrifying roller coaster, one where you can't see the track ahead. Months of treatment stretched out, with good days where hope flickered bright and bad days where it dimmed to nearly nothing. Remission would come, lifting me up, only for exacerbation, to drag me back down into the fight. But I kept fighting, every single day, with every bit of strength I had, both for me and for Lily. Finally, the doctors gave me the news I'd been dreaming of, I was healthy, the cancer was gone. Walking out of that hospital felt surreal, like stepping into a new life waiting to be written. The fresh start wasn't just symbolic, it was real, tangible, and it was mine for the taking. Recovery wasn't just about the physical, it was mental, emotional, a total overhaul of life as I knew it. The day I was discharged from the hospital marked not just the end of my treatment, but the beginning of something new. Something mine. Lily picked me up, her car loaded with my few belongings. Ready to start fresh, Mom? She asked, her smile bright and encouraging. I couldn't help but return her smile. More than ready, kiddo. We drove to my new place, a modest house I'd bought with the money I'd wisely invested over the years. It wasn't just a house, though, it was a promise of new beginnings, of freedom. As we unpacked, Lily chatted about decorating ideas, about painting the walls and planting a garden. This is going to be a place of happiness, Mom. You'll see. We'll make it our sanctuary. Her enthusiasm was infectious. For the first time in years, I felt light, like a weight had been lifted. I'd like that, Lily. A sanctuary sounds perfect. We took a break, sitting amidst boxes, with takeout containers between us. You know, I've been thinking, I started, about what comes next. I want to use this chance not just to heal, but to rediscover who I am, who I want to be. Lily nodded, taking my hand. I've got your back, Mom. Always. And hey, you're already doing it. Look at how far you've come. She was right. The journey from being trapped in a loveless marriage to standing on my own two feet hadn't been easy. But here I was, ready to face the world on my terms. I'm thinking of starting a blog. I mused. Sharing my story, maybe help others who've been in similar situations. That's an amazing idea. Lily's eyes sparkled with pride. You've got so much wisdom to share. Plus, you're pretty badass, you know? I laughed, the sound bright and genuine. Thanks, Lily. I guess I am, aren't I? Said and done. I started my own personal blog, in which I shared the details of my struggle with cancer. People in the comments supported me, shared their own experiences. It was touching and reassuring at the same time. During one of our quiet evenings, Lily shared her own monumental decision. Mom, I've cut ties with Dad, she said, her voice steady, but I could see the turmoil in her eyes. After everything, I see you as my real mom. He chose his path, and I've chosen mine, with you. Hearing her call me mom in that context, knowing the weight it carried, filled me with an indescribable mix of pride and sorrow. Sorrow for the broken bridges in her life, but pride in her strength and in the bond we shared. Lily, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. I started, taking her hands in mine. 
When the time comes, I'll be leaving everything to you, the house, the three million dollars, all of it. You're my family, my future. Lily looked at me, tears brimming in her eyes, but a smile breaking through. I don't need any of that, mom. Just having you is enough. But thank you, for everything. In that moment, any lingering shadows of the past faded away. We were family, bound not by blood, but by choice, by love. And as we looked ahead, the future wasn't just a blank page, it was a canvas waiting for us to fill it with color, with life.